Uh, Proverbs chapter 6 this morning. Uh, I'm going to read verse 25 and 26. Two verses. We'll use verse 26 as our key verse. Verse 25 says, Lust not after her beauty in thy heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulterous will hunts for the precious life. Read verse 26 again. For by means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulterous will hunt for the precious life. Let us pray. Dear Father, Lord, I thank you for churches for those who gather today, for those many preachers that are taking the pulpit and are about to preach the Word. Lord, we thank you today for the many sermons that people will hear, Lord, the freedom that we have to worship, Lord, to hear your correction and your Word and instructions. Lord, I pray, Lord, that I take part in this. Only for your glory. Lord, I pray that the congregation receives the word for your glory, for their relationship with you. Lord, we, we only thank of those things. We take Patrick Salter out of it. We take our own individual selves out of it. And Lord, we let this be about you. This is your time. Lord, we pray today that we keep it holy. That we allow you to lead us in this day. Amen. Amen. Um, boy, we made a mess out of Christmas. What it, what it used to be, and really the reason you know, we, we've come up with all these slogans to try to keep our, our mind back on, the, on the, <coughs> the main point. But the reason for the season, um, you really shouldn't even have to say that, should you? You wouldn't have to, shouldn't have to say, you know, well, the reason we're doing this is not about the tree or the presence or, you know, and that's always been the church's job. The church's job is to show the importance of Christmas. The church's job is to keep Christmas what it is intended to be. It's our job. And where we failed over the last 30, 40 years is that the church, the individual people in the church have not kept to that. You know, if we keep to that as a whole, then we get further in. The world's always going to be the world, and the world is always going to go its own way. But the church is always to stand for what is right, and what is true, and what is the real reason for Christmas. <coughs> We tend to want to be a part of what is right and what we're supposed to do, but we tend to want to get out and grab a little bit as we go along. And that has, of course, been our weakness. But in verse 26, we talk about even a more important subject than Christmas itself. But we talk about today salvation. Not just about salvation, but what salvation means. The importance of salvation. Verse 26, for by the means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Now what the piece of bread symbolizes is his poverty. A man that may have a regular life or, or, or is doing well and, and, and has his mind on, on what is moral and the moral dignity and, and, and a moral life and a family and all these things can be wasted away by losing his focus and his focus turned from those important things to the flesh. And is brought in time, mostly in time, down to poverty. But the last part of the verse is more important too. It's about the sermon of today is 
says, and the adulterous will. And that's that temptation that lingers in the dark alley. It's the thing that you don't see or you're not ready for. It's the thing that, that first grabs your attention. You know, your life is but to stay more. And we're trying to stay on a track. <coughs> but there's something that we get a hint of or we get a smell of, or <coughs> something attracts us. And that's what this is talking about in this verse, is that wheel that lies in wait for that opportune moment to distract you, to get your attention, to take your focus off of your life as it is today. And what we call that is the will of God. Our life today should be in the will of God. And in that path that God calls as a narrow path, this is lying awake in some dark alley waiting to take you off of that path. It says that it's lying in wait to hunt for that precious life that is going to go by. That precious life. Life. And I take that word today, precious. As Kim started out this morning with the, the sweetest thing you know, the sweetest thing about the season, the sweetest thing you're looking forward to. Oh, we turn now to precious. What is precious to you? What do you love? And, and what would you go to great lengths? To keep or to have, to hold or to protect. What this verse means is there's something that's lying in the wake that you're not going to see, that you're not necessarily ready for, that is waiting to take what is precious in this world from you. Our Lord asked this question. Our Lord said, What would a man give in exchange for his soul? What in the world would we give for our soul? What would we trade today for our soul? Our eternal being. Is there anything on this world or in this earth that you would exchange that you would make a trade for your soul. Now today we preach and preach and preach about salvation in our churches. And we say, and you hear statistics and all these things about there's so many people in the church that aren't saved and because they're not saved, that's why the work's not getting done. The, the fields aren't getting plowed and the seeds aren't getting spread because of the people that are sitting on pews are not saved. And we preach and preach and preach and preach about salvation. And how many salvation messages have you heard? How many of them have tried to get your attention? Maybe today the problem isn't so much the lack of salvation, but maybe it's the lack of knowing what we have in salvation. In other words, the Christians that have been saved, that are already saved, that are coming to church faithfully, maybe the problem isn't their salvation. Maybe today the problem is we don't know what salvation truly is. Maybe we don't know what it is or, or what it means or how important it is or how precious it really is. Because we do hear a lot of sermons on being saved. You need to be saved. The only way to heaven is to be saved. You have to be saved. You have to be saved by Jesus. And He's the only way. But, once we make that decision, what is it? What is salvation? You know, I hear on movies 
and just in other things, and you can read books, and you can hear how people talk in the movies, and how, that, how something that's so precious to them, and how they talk about it, and you think, people don't really talk like that in real, in real life. Have you ever thought that? They don't talk like that in real life. This is not real. But think about the things that people are willing to give their life for. 